Hello and welcome back to this channel. Dear students, this is the revision lecture for the subject electrical circuits. I will be revising first two units of this subject. I will provide you some useful concepts as well as I will give you some useful tricks to memorize the formulae, memorize the different equations, memorize the graphs and so on. So watch this video till the end. Without wasting the time, let us start the topic. The first topic is network simplification technique. I will explain you the simplest technique to apply K KCL as well as KVL. First we will discuss KCL. KCL stands for Kirchhoff's current law. It is also known as node analysis. Node is a junction where different branches are connected. Almost in all numericals, this bottom line is considered to be grounded. So we can well show like this. So it means that you don't have to apply any node analysis for the bottom line. Skip this bottom line. Then identify how many nodes are in the given circuit. So we can easily say, as I mentioned, node is a point where different branches are connected. So this is one node, this is second node, this is third node. Once you will mark the node, one more important thing. This I have shown this resistance as 5 ohm. If suppose this branch is not there, then we would not have considered this as a node because it is a single wire which is bent. Presently, I am talking about this pi ohm. Pi ohm is already there. So, this is a node. Second node, third node. Once you will identify the node, mark the notation in terms of voltages. That means, I will say this voltage at first node is V1. At second node, it is V2. Third node, it is V3. Strictly mark the notations in terms of voltage. Now, at any junction in the diagram, you have to mark the directions of current as far as possible. Try to memorize it like this. If there is a voltage source, current comes out from the positive terminal of voltage source. Whenever there is a ground connection, current tries to move towards the ground terminal. But in the exam, suppose you will consider the direction in opposite way. It will not make any difference. Only the thing is that answer of calculated current will be negative. It is quite valid. You, Whenever you are getting a negative answer in the exam, just write a sentence that assumed direction should be opposite. That's it. But it will not make any difference as far as calculations are concerned. So what I was talking about at node, the uh, statement of KCL is summation, this symbol note indicates summation, summation of incoming currents, I means current is equals to summation of outgoing currents at any node. Let us say I need to apply node analysis at node V1. This is a current source where current is already marked in the question. So unnecessary don't assume notation, keep this current as it is, which is one ampere. Through this branch, no current is mentioned. Randomly, I will assume the direction and notation like this. You can well consider the direction in opposite direction. This is the third branch which is connected to node V1. Let us say this current is I2. Likewise, we just have to mark the notations uh, as far as all nodes are concerned. This current is say I3. Again, you may ask why this is in downward direction. What I said, bottom line is always assumed to be grounded so and current tries to move towards the ground still carelessly if you consider it in upward direction it will not make any difference say this current is i4 uh, then this current is i5 why i assumed the direction in upward direction uh, uh, as a thumb rule what i said whenever you are talking about a voltage source this is a positive terminal current comes out from the positive terminal so i assumed it in the upward direction all right now Suppose I want to apply KVL at uh, KCL at node VA. What is the statement? Incoming summation of incoming current is equal to summation of outgoing current. So look at this diagram. Incoming current is 1 ampere. So I will write 1 is equal to outgoing currents are I1 plus I2. These are the two outgoing currents. Now after writing the equation, be habitat of converting every current in terms of voltage. How to do it? Suppose this is the resistance R at one end voltage is V1 at another end voltage is V2 and let us assume that current passing through this resistance is I. How to write equation of I? I is simply V1 minus V2 upon R. Basic equation of current is voltage upon resistance. Since I am assuming current is passing from V1 to V2, I have written V1 minus V2 upon R. If I would have assumed the direction from V2 to V1, I would have written V2 minus V1 upon R. Same way, this one is constant, I am keeping it as it is, is equals to equation of I1. 
will simply become v1 minus v2 upon 2. This resistance is 2, v1 minus v2 upon 2. Plus, look at this direction of I2. It is from v1 to v3 and resistance is 5 ohm. So, I will write v1 minus v3 upon 5. Simplify this equation. You will be getting equation 1. Uh, give some number, say equation 1. Same logic, if you want to apply KCL at V2, what are incoming currents? I1 is equals to I3 plus I4. Then, if you want to apply KCL or node analysis at node uh, V3, incoming currents are I4 and I5. So, for V3, I can write I4 plus I5 plus I2 because I2 is also connected to V3. All our incoming currents is equals to 0. As I said, express every current in terms of voltage. That's what I have shown in uh, node 1. Apply same trick to all the nodes. You will be getting three equations because you will be applying KCL node analysis at three nodes. Solve those equations on the calculator. You will get the current passing through each element. Now very important concept. I am not going in details of all these things because I have already uh, made separate videos on all such topics. Now what is the important part related to this? Uh, this is the current source. Suppose if at node uh, V3, this resistance is not there. Directly voltage source is connected. Then how to solve such numericals? Keep in mind, whenever voltage source is directly connected at any node, it is known as a super node. Very, very important concept. So this node is known as super node where you should not apply KCL, that is node analysis. So, while solving the numericals on node analysis, always keep in mind, at any node, whenever directly voltage source is connected, you should not apply KCL or node analysis at that point. But, you can generate one equation. How do you do it? For V1 and V2, you can apply KCL or node analysis. What about V3? Since voltage source is directly connected, there is no in-between resistance, then, Directly you can write, this is the 5 volt of voltage source which is positive terminal. It is directly connected to V3. So I can generate one equation like V3 is equals to 5 volt. This is one equation. Remaining two equations you can generate by applying KCL at node V1 and V2. This is the way how to solve the numericals on KCL. How to remember it? If it is KCL, that is Kirchhoff's current law or node analysis, mark the notations in terms of voltage. Since it is KCL, mark the notation in opposite sense, that is in terms of voltage. So I have written V1, V2, V3. And how to identify super uh, mesh or uh, super loop or super, sorry, super node. In that case, if voltage source is directly connected at any node, if voltage source, uh, I said, it is directly connected to at, uh, at any node, it is known as the super node then do not apply KCL or node analysis at super node, but you can generate one equation, whatever I have shown, V3 is equal to 5 volt. If suppose this is the negative terminal, this is the positive terminal, in that case you would have written V3 is equal to minus 5 volt. Whatever polarity is there, give that sign and write the value as it is. This is about the node analysis or KCL. Now, next important part from this chapter is KVL. It is also known as mesh analysis or loop analysis. I have considered one diagram. These are two voltage sources. Very simple logic. What is a loop or mesh? When you start from any point, suppose I will start doing calculation from this point. I will move like this, like this, and I will come back to the same point like this. It is known as one loop. Likewise, you can very easily identify. So in this given circuit, there are three loops. This is first loop. Let us say loop current is I1. This is second loop. Loop current is I2. This is third loop. Loop current is I3. Why I have assumed the direction like this in a clockwise direction? It is not a rule. But if you assume the direction like this, the calculations will be very easy. You don't have to memorize which should be direction, whether clockwise or anti-clockwise. In all numericals, consider the directions like this only. Now, as far as case KVL is concerned, the statement is in, in, in a closed loop or mesh. Loop is also called as a mesh. Algebraic summation of voltage drop across all elements in zero. How to apply KCL? As I mentioned, there are three loops in the given circuit. Current always flows. If you have some resistance like this, like this, 
this is the value of resistance and this is the direction of current i current always moves from positive to negative so depending on the direction of loop currents whatever you have marked in the circuit mark notations plus minus across each resistance for example for this three resist three ohm resistance current i1 moves from left to right so i will mark here plus minus for this two ohm current i1 flows in downward direction so plus minus this 5 volt this is plus minus this is the voltage source so polarities are fixed for this 2 ohm again apply the same logic current i2 flows like this so plus minus this is positive terminal plus minus for this 2 ohm i2 flows in upward direction so plus minus for this i3 if i'm talking about i3 for 5 ohm i3 flows like this like this so plus minus then i3 is flowing like this through the upper branch so it is plus minus similarly for this it is plus minus then consider one loop at a time for example if i will consider loop i will i will show how to write the loop equations for one loop so if i am talking about loop i1 start from any point let us say start from this point you can start from any point you will have to move in the direction of current and come back to the same point now two important rules those are if you are moving from positive to negative consider it as negative and opposite way if you are moving from negative to positive consider that voltage drop as positive so if you start from uh, this point then we are moving from negative to positive so i will write the equation for you then we have to complete consider this first loop so plus to minus plus to minus is minus sign minus now this was the voltage source so i wrote the value directly in case of resistance formula is resistance into current current through 3 ohm is both the currents are flowing this i1 as well as i3 if you are using these directions then always and always there will be a minus sign in between the two currents you are in loop 1 so write it as the value of resistance is 3 then i1 minus i3 because you are writing equation for loop 1 if you write equation for loop 3 then it will be same thing but it will be i3 minus i1 now for this 2 ohm again 2 currents are flowing so as i mentioned earlier this will be minus 2 because we are moving from plus to minus minus 2 in the bracket since we are in loop 1 i will write i1 minus i2 there is no resistance in this branch and we have reached up to this point so equate this e equation to 0 simplify this equation you will get equation number 1 likewise apply kvl for loop 2 and loop 3 you will be getting three equations so if you solve these equations on the calculator you will get answers of i1 i2 and i3 one important part related to this kvl is suppose instead of this 5 volt there is a current source like this now as usual mark the uh, loop currents without thinking whether it is super mesh or not i1 i2 i3 then whenever in any loop there is a current source then it is known as the super loop remember these points while explaining kcl node analysis what i said whenever there is a voltage source connected directly to the node it is known as super node because it was kcl for for kcl use the concept of voltage source for kvl that is kirchhoff's voltage law mesh analysis or loop analysis if there is a current source let us say value of current source is one ampere if there is a current source existing in between any loop that is known as a super loop or super mesh in such cases first assume the directions mark the polarities complete everything but do not apply kvl for loop one because there is a presence of current source then you have to generate one equation in case of super loop so this loop is known as super loop how to generate one equation very simple this current source is connected in this branch through this branch which loop current is flowing it is i1 i1 is flowing in the same direction as that of one ampere current source so i will generate one equation i1 is equals to one ampere suppose the direction of current source is in the downward direction now in this case i1 is flowing in upward direction and current source is in downward direction then how to write equation for super mesh it is 
I1 is equals to minus 1 ampere. But for the remaining loops, you can apply uh, KVL for loop 2 and loop 3. So again, you will be getting three equations and you can solve the problem accordingly. So these are the few basic things related to node analysis and mesh analysis. Next part is the network theorems. The first theorem is superposition theorem. In case of superposition theorem, uh, you have to consider one source at a time. This is the given diagram. Suppose I want to apply superposition theorem to calculate Vx shown in the, fig in the uh, figure. This diagram will be given in the question and it is asked to calculate Vx which is voltage drop across 1 ohm. This type of source, diamond shaped symbol source is known as dependent source. In all cases, keep dependent source as it is. Now, except depending sources, there is one voltage source and one current source. Remember the rules. Consider one source at a time. If you consider 6 volt, then I don't have to consider 2 amperes. What to do for remaining source which you are not considering? You need to remember simply two rules. If remaining source is a voltage source, short circuited. If it is a current source, open circuited. For example, in the first case, if I am considering 6 volt, then I need to open circuit this branch. Open circuit means simply remove this current source using any technique calculate Vx. For example, in this case, I will be applying KVL because there is only one uh, single loop and I will calculate current through this loop. Once I will get the current, current into 1 amp, 1 ohm will be the voltage of Vx. Next step is this current source, I will be considering it as it is which is 2 amperes. Remaining source is voltage source. If it is a voltage source, short circuited, so remove this voltage source directly joined by one wire this is short circuit condition again apply kvl and calculate value of current and then current into one ohm will be vx so you will get the answer of vx in the second stage in the first stage whatever vx you are getting denoted by vx dash or vx1 whatever in the second step you will get another answer denoted by vx double dash final vx will be addition of two answers but do remember keep dependent sources as it is. This is the case of superposition theorem. Not necessary that you need to apply KVL only in case of superposition theorem. You can apply any technique. Just you have to calculate whatever is asked in the question. For example, in this case, you need to calculate Vx. Second theorem is the Thevenin's theorem. Suppose the question is like this. This is the given diagram and it is asked obtain Thevenin's equivalent uh, diagram for the given network. Very first and important step, step is what is asked obtain Thevenin's equivalent and two points are mentioned in the question. These are points A and B. First step is remove the resistance which is connected between points A and B. That means open circuited and then using any technique calculate VTH between two points where this resistance was connected. That means indirectly calculate VTH between points A and B where we did open circuit. Now, you can again use any technique to do this calculation. So, you will get the value of VTH. After that, you need to calculate RTH. VTH is known as Thevenin's equivalent voltage. After that, you need to calculate RTH. RTH is known as Thevenin's equivalent resistance. How to do it? To calculate RTH, simply remove VTH, mark here RTH. Whenever you are calculating Thevenin's equivalent resistance, if you are looking from this end, always start doing calculation from the remaining end. That means from this end, now you need to apply again these two rules. When you are calculating RTH, if the source is current source, open circuited, if the source is voltage source, short circuited. So in this case, I will short circuit this branch and this current source will be open circuited. So very simple, this is open circuited, that means there is no connection. So this 800 ohm is of no use. It is nowhere required because of open circuit. Current will not flow through this. So only one resistance is remaining. So in this problem, RTH will be 600 ohm. Next step is how to draw the Thevenin's equivalent diagram. Very simple rule. It is a voltage source. Do remember the basic. In case of voltage source, when you are drawing equivalent diagram, so draw the voltage source like this. This is the value of VTH you, which you will be calculating at the beginning itself and draw Thevenin's equivalent resistance in series with this VTH. Keep 
keep these points A and B as it is. And finally, connect the resistance which we had removed earlier while solving the numericals. So this is the final Thevenin's equivalent diagram. I think this was having the value 600 ohm. Then if it is asked to calculate current passing through 600, apply KVL, you will get the value of current flowing through 600. So this is the Thevenin's equivalent uh, network. If Norton's theorem is asked, then what I said in case of Thevenin's theorem, first stage step was to calculate VTH. In Norton's theorem, first step is short circuit the branch. Listen carefully. In case of Thevenin's theorem, we opened this branch, we opened resistance which was connected between A and B. In Norton's, short circuit it. Denote this current by ISC. Using any method, calculate ISC. Second step is same as the Thevenin's theorem that is calculate RTH again using the rule that uh, remaining source is uh, uh, voltage source short circuit A if it is current source open circuit A. I will tell you one simple trick. If if you know Thevenin's theorem you will draw the equivalent diagram like this you can directly convert it into Norton's theorem just calculate ISC using the formula VTH upon RTH. I mean if Norton's theorem is asked you will cal do the calculation for Thevenin's theorem, you will get the value of VTH and RTH, then use this formula ISC, that is short circuit current is VTH upon RTH, and final diagram will be, you will be drawing ISC like this, and in parallel with this current source, you will connect RTH. This is the Norton's equivalent diagram. So you don't have to prepare Norton's uh, theorem separately. It is based on Thevenin's theorem itself. The last theorem related to this is maximum power transfer theorem, abbreviated as MPT, maximum power transfer theorem. If the numerical is asked on MPT, very simple trick I will tell you, apply Thevenin's theorem only, do calculate the value of VTH and RTH. You just have to add one extra step that is maximum power is given by VTH square upon 4 RL. And this RL is load resistance. RL is same as RTH. This is known as the maximum power condition. The next unit is transient response analysis. Before starting this concept, I will explain one important thing related to this unit. There are two types of responses. One is transient response and second is steady state response. Suppose I will plot some graph and the response of some circuit is exponential like this. It is exponentially increasing and after that it remains constant like this. Let us say this time period is T1. From 0 to T1, the output increases. So this particular response is known as transient response. Very simple. If the response, response means output. If it is changing with respect to time, it is known as the transient response. After T1, the output, that is the response, remains constant. So this type of response is known as steady state response. These are the two definitions for two types of responses. Apart from this, the most important part from this unit is the initial conditions. You have to memorize this table. I will tell you simple trick how to remember this table. Before that, what is this T is equals to zero and what is this T is equals to infinity? If you are working with any experiment, whenever you will switch on the uh, supply, this particular instant is known as T is equals to zero. For example, if you are performing some experiment and you will start doing experiment at 7 a.m., then this time period 7 a.m. is denoted by T is equals to zero. What about the readings? If you want to take some readings, I mean, what was initially present for that particular experiment, that means you want to take readings at say 6.59 a.m. Just instant before 7 a.m., before starting an experiment, this particular instant, just starting an experiment is denoted by notation T is equals to zero minus. One more thing. You have started experiment at 7 a.m. 
just after starting an experiment that means at 7.01 am whatever readings you are getting you will be denoting it by t is equals to 0 plus so very simple once you will start doing some experiment that uh, time period is known as t is equals to 0 or remember it like this if some numerical is asked then some switch will be shown in the diagram whenever you will close the switch that time period is t is equals to 0 just before closing the switch time period is t 0 minus instant just after closing the switch is time period t is equals to 0 plus this condition t is equals to 0 minus is the instant before starting particular experiment that means before closing a particular switch this is known as initial condition to solve all the numericals related to initial condition you should know this table as well apart from this if the question is what are initial conditions then you have to draw this table and you have to explain this thing explanation is pretty simple i will tell you how to remember how to memorize this table very simple do remember there are three major components in uh, electronics one is resistor second is inductor third is capacitor resistance is not a storage device it cannot store the charges whereas inductor and capacitor are storage devices second uh, concept always remember it like this inductor is current operating device capacitor is voltage operating device so coming back to this table as i mentioned resistor does not store anything so t is equals to zero condition is known as initial condition and t is equals to infinity is known as final condition i have shown this all initial and final conditions in one diagram only if only initial condition is asked you have to just mention this part if only final condition is asked skip this initial part mention element and uh, uh, this row of uh, final condition so register remains as it is you can be easily remember it in case of inductor see what i said inductor and capacitor are storage devices it may happen that i will explain you one concept suppose this is the capacitor which is charging like this the maximum value up to which capacitor can fully charge is say 10 volt suppose it is charged up to 5 volt it is not fully charged and someone stops performing experiment let us say this value is 5 volt then discharging of capacitor needs certain time period if before completely discharging of capacitor some another person start performing experiment then this charging of capacitor will not start from zero it will start from some other value like this this is known as initial condition in very simplified language if some charge is initially stored across inductor or capacitor that represents initial condition now about this uh, uh, diagram about this chart in case of inductor if there is no initial condition that means you are using fresh inductor then t is equals to zero it is open circuit t is equals to infinity it is short circuit you just have to memorize these two things first case is open circuit second is short circuit if there is an inductor carrying some current i0 what i said in case of inductor remember it like this inductor is current operating device so initial thing across inductor will be current this initial current is denoted by i0 then in this case what do you need to do you have just remember this diagram this equivalent circuit it was open circuited in place of open circuit draw a current source which was mentioned in the in case of this inductor then this was short circuit i am talking about t is equals to infinity how to memorize the things keep this short circuit branch as it is and in parallel with short circuit draw the current source very simple remember it like this when you are talking about short circuit draw the source in parallel when you are talking about open circuit draw the source in series that means in place of open source wherever i have written open source i will be writing current source having same direction which was shown in the earlier diagram in case of short circuit draw the current source in parallel so this is about inductor if i consider a capacitor which is a fresh capacitor there is no initial charge then in that case refer again this second condition what i said this is very important concept just you need to remember these two conditions so if you are talking about a capacitor having some value you have remembered this 
in case of inductor it was open circuit Cap consider capacitor as opposite case to that of inductor so in case of capacitor i will draw short circuit this was open circuit so i will draw short circuit this was short circuit i will draw open circuit simple then in case of voltage source what i said voltage uh, in case of capacitor if there is a certain charge present then that is denoted by v0 because capacitor is voltage operating device inductor is current operating device so this is a capacitor let us say initial charge is v0 how to represent it similar to this just draw one voltage source because it is the case of capacitor this was the inductor so i have drawn one current source here i will draw one voltage source and if V0 is present, what our final condition? Look at this diagram. It is open circuit. What I said, in case of open circuit, how to remember the things? Draw the source in series. In case of short circuit, draw the source in parallel. So I have drawn the same voltage source, V0, having same polarities which was shown in earlier diagram, in series with open circuit. This is the way how you can memorize this table. This is most important table as far as initial conditions are concerned. Now, the new types of numericals which are expected on initial conditions is you need to calculate the derivative of initial conditions. It is not mathematical derivative. You just have to perform the calculations by simply remembering two formulae. One is voltage across capacitor. Second is voltage across inductor. So wherever capacitor is shown in the diagram, you will be using this formula, but you are getting integration side. In all numericals, whenever you will come across integration sign to cancel out integration, perform derivation. So if you perform derivative, perform derivative, if you perform derivative, I will write the equation. So this simply becomes d by dt of Vc. I am talking about this equation is equals to 1 by c. Integration gets vanished into i of t. Integration of i dt is i of t. So from this I can well generate the equation I of t. I will transfer this C here. C d by dt of Vc. This is the required formula in terms of derivative. Once you know this equation, you can apply it to any circuit. You can calculate the value of current in terms of derivative. Second formula, Vl that is voltage across inductor is given by L d by dt of i t. This is directly written in terms of derivative. Suppose you need to calculate value of current. How to do it? Again, I, I, I want to vanish this sign of uh, derivative. So I will take integration on both sides. Very simple logic. Do remember it. When you want to cancel out integration sign, perform derivative. When you want to cancel out derivative sign, perform integration. So I want to eliminate derivative sign. I will take integration. So if you take integration, it will be integration of VL dt is equal to L this derivative sign will get vanished into i of t. So simply i of t is equal to 1 by L integration of VL dt. VL is the voltage drop across inductor. So just by remembering these two basic formulae, you can generate the required equations. I have already created the separate videos on uh, uh, calculation of initial conditions. Please watch that video so that you will come to know how to solve the numericals as far as this initial condition part is concerned. Remaining part from this chapter is, there are four derivations. One is driven RL circuit. Next is undriven RL circuit. Third is driven RC circuit. And fourth is undriven RC circuit. Uh, I have already created separate videos on how to memorize the things. You don't have to mug up these derivations. I have clearly mentioned in that videos how to memorize the graphs. So do watch that video because there are four derivations related to this. Driven means some voltage source is connected. Undriven means voltage source is not connected. Still the uh, current passes through the circuit just because we are using storage element like inductor or capacitor. So there are four derivations related to this. There are different graphs. I have also mentioned how to memorize these graphs. You don't have to mug up the things. Do watch that video. So these four derivations will be more clear to you. Now the remaining part from this chapter is you should also know the definition of time constant. The, there is a different term related to time constant for each 
of these derivations again in that video i have explained what is the time constant so definition of time constant is very much uh, required so these are the few uh, most important points as far as the unit number 2 is concerned so this was just a conceptual uh, overview i have already created separate videos for each and every topic so if you want such type of videos for other subjects also do let me know in the comment section till uh, today that's it for the today's session thank you thanks a lot